Opponent swaps out to Azumarill trying to catch a Night Slash, but instead, they're going to catch this Gunk Shot straight to the face. What is going on everyone? Ox here with another video. If you're new to the channel, we do upload Pokemon Go content mostly related to PvP. And if you're a returning subscriber, like Yavoltal Pokemon, thank you for the support. In today's video, we are taking a look at our final battles from the interlude season before we jump into season 11. These battles take place in the open Great League featuring a very fun team consisting of Obstagoon in the lead with a Shadow Drapion and Dragalge in the back. The main attraction on this team is the nuke moves. Obstagoon in particular will be running Gunk Shot in the first set of 5 battles and then we will be testing Hyper Beam in the second set of 5. This is by no means a great team and definitely on the spicy side but with a new season underway the very early ranks are always the best time of the season season to test things out and this team ended up working a lot better than expected. When we take a look at the ratings on PV Poke, the team does have an F rating for coverage so you can expect to run into some issues but as always we will try to overcome these obstacles as best we can. If you enjoy this type of content please consider leaving a like and a comment down below it really helps the channel grow and without any further ado let's jump into the first battle right now. So today we will be taking a look at Obstagoon with Gunk Shot in the first set of 5 battles and then switching Gunk Shot to Hyper Beam for the second half of the video. As you can see on the screen, this team has a very high threat score according to PV Poke. A Pokemon like Toxicroak for example could be a massive core breaker, but we'll see how things go. Hopping into the first battle, we are leading Obstagoon into a Skarmory. This is actually a decent lead for Obstagoon, but I decided to swap out into the Dragology. At the time, I didn't actually realize how bad of a matchup this was for Dragalge. It's actually pretty awful so it might make more sense to stay in with the Obstagoon against the Skarmory lead but of course that does leave you extremely vulnerable if the opponent has a ground type and you fail to lure it out. So in this particular scenario I'm just trying to do as much chip damage as possible with the Dragalge. The Skarmory does eventually take us out and we are going to shield this up in case it is a Brave Bird and after the opponent does lower their defense I'm going to swap out into the Shadow Drapion to get an energy lead they swap out into whiz cash this is looking very bad because we are not only down shields right here but we are pretty much getting hard countered at this point in the matchup so i let one mud bomb go through hoping to get to another crunch right here the defense has dropped already once on the opponent so they do shield up they are going to commit to the mud shot down and obstagoon comes back in at this point we need to know shield even if this is a blizzard which it is that does a lot of damage right here and we're going to commit to the counter down opponent tries catching a move onto Skarmory doesn't work Wiz Cash comes back in throwing this first night slash right here and they actually end up shielding so this should tell us that their final Pokemon may be feeling a little intimidated by Obstagoon and this is where an addiction to BM ends up costing us I'm already clicking the gunk shot before I even see what the final Pokemon is a Lolan Raichu would have went down to two night slashes but I have a problem and I just want to throw trash at everything that ends up costing us the match and the last time you probably saw something as bad as that was when Niantic said they were going to take three months to fix GBL and not a single thing was fixed. Perfect example right here we get some desync. Opponent swaps out to Azumarill trying to catch a Night Slash but instead they're going to catch this Gunk Shot straight to the face. Bang! There it is. In hindsight, probably should have swapped out into Drapion immediately because even with that gunk shot landing, Azumarill still has a lot of HP left. As a result of the late switch, we are going to shield up once and commit to the complete Poison Sting farm. That is going to give us a bunch of energy right here. Galarian Stunfist comes back in. Ideally, we will be able to throw back-to-back -back crunches here before they reach a rock slide, and that happens to be the case, but Galarian Stunfist just barely hangs on with 1 HP. We will allow this rock slide to take us out, come in with Dragalge, and the opponent has a Trevenant in the back. They definitely made it easier for us by not building up to the Shadow Ball. Seed Bomb is not doing anything to Dragalge, and these Dragon Tails are absolutely absolutely chunking away. Because of how much damage these Dragon Tails are actually inflicting on Trevenant, we could safely go for Aqua Tails and force these shields. Going to swap out now into the Obstagoon for the unnecessary BM because why not? 
and that swap is going to mark an end to this battle. Just like that Jimmy Butler miss 3 marked an end to the Heat season in Game 7 against the Boston Celtics. For the lead! Let's hop into the next battle. This time we got Obscoon once again into a Galarian Stun Fisk. And this time the opponent's going to swap out immediately into the Azumarill. And we are not going for the Gunk Shot this time. Learning from the previous battle, just swapping out immediately into the Drapion. We are going to tank one Ice Beam right here. Build up to two Sludge Bombs. Throw the first one, which actually will not KO. But it does force a shield from the opponent. So we are going to go for the second right here. And once again, the opponent is just barely going to hang on with one HP and a dream. That is going to force the shield, but one poison sting will take them out. Galarian Stunfisk will come back in. We have a crunch ready to go. And coming from a Shadow Drapion, that is still dealing a very significant amount of damage. Obstagoon comes in. We are not going to shield anything right here. They go for the rock slide. We are going to get off this night slash right here. The opponent does end up shielding probably thinking it is a cross chop. Skarmory in the back, not exactly what we want to see right here, so we are going to shield up this sky attack, look to get off two night slashes, and then try to throw maybe one or two more counters before swapping out into the Dragology. At this point, it is very important to keep our Obstagoon alive, so we need to time this perfectly. Going to throw three counters, swap out into Dragology, not able to take them out before a move comes through, really hoping this is only a sky attack and thankfully that is the case. Stunfist comes back in. We are able to get off this Aqua Tail. Once again the opponent hanging on with only one HP. Probably the main theme from this video thus far but Dragalgy is able to hold on. We are going to pick up the win. Let's hop into the next battle. We are going to be leading Obstagoon, this time into a Swampert. This is definitely one of the more challenging leads for this team. Obstagoon can win this in the two shields, but ideally I would like to catch a Hydro Cannon onto Dragalgy. As a result, I chose to shield up this Hydro Cannon, and we are going to get the very elusive Night Slash Boost. I believe it has a 30% chance, but for me, it feels like only 3%. Pelipper comes in right here, going to no shield the Weather Ball, and this Night Slash is going to absolutely chunk away. Able to reach a second, this is going to take out the Pelipper or force the shield, and we actually get a second boost right here. And although it is very tempting to double shield, I felt like catching a resisted Weather Ball onto Dragalgy and preserving the shield is the better play in the long run, especially when it turns out that they have a Skarmory in the back. So this game is definitely not over just yet. There is really no reason to shield up the Dragology right here, so we will let the Sky Attack go through. Not able to reach this Aqua Tail, and Drapion is going to have its hands full right here. Building up towards the Crunch, and the opponent swaps out into Swampert. Once again, just barely hanging on, but this time we're going to return the favor, catching the Hydro Cannon onto Obstagoon. This is a very important catch for two reasons. One, it allows us to preserve the final shield, and two, it gives us the necessary farm to build up to a double crunch, which is exactly what we need to take out this Skarmory and win that game. Three in a row, let's see if we could pull off the four and one set, hopping into battle number five. This time we are going to be leading Obstagoon into an Azumarill. This is definitely not an easy lead, even with Gunk Shot on the Obstagoon. We're going to swap out actually into Drapion. I know the standard play would probably be to swap out into Dragalgy, but if they're running Ice Beam, I don't really want to give them the option of staying in that matchup, where it does become very bait dependent on us landing a Gunk Shot. So I just come in with the Drapion instead. We do end up taking a shield from the Talonflame, and this is pretty much what I want right here. With the opponent being down to only one shield, there is a lot more pressure on calling the bait versus the gunk shot for the opponent. Azumarill is going to come back in and we are going to shield up the ice beam. It does end up only being a play rough so this is very good news for us. We are going to build up towards the gunk shot and the opponent swaps out into Cradley. I think instead of throwing this aqua tail, it would have made more sense to bank all of this energy, come in with the obstagoon instead and play it out from there. But since that is not what we did, 
Let's see how it plays out from here. This Night Slash is not going to knock out Cradley, which means they are going to reach another Grass Knot. I decide to actually shield right here, thinking the Azumarill probably isn't going to throw energy and allow us to reach a Gunk Shot. Turns out that is not what happens, and Play Rough takes us out. So at this point in the battle, the game comes down to one decision. Do we go straight for the Gunk Shot and hope they no shield, or go for the Aqua Tail Bait and hope they do shield? setting up for the gunk shot nuke. We end up on the right side of the coin flip and all that's left is a trash can falling from the sky. Hit him with that bang! There it is. A sight so nice we have to see it twice. Dragalgy delivering the pain to Azumarill. There was a couple of gunk shots landed in this first half of the video, but that was definitely the most devastating one. We will be swapping out gunk shot for Hyper Beam in the second half. Is it going to make this team worse, better, or change nothing at all? Let's find out right now. Alright, so jumping into the second set of battles, we have swapped out Gunk Shot on the Obstagoon in exchange for Hyper Beam. It is going to cost 5 energy more than Gunk Shot, but it will be benefiting from Stab. So is it going to be an upgrade? I guess we'll have to find out right now. And we're kicking things off with a very challenging lead. We are going to swap out into the Shadow Drapion, and the opponent is going to throw what seems to be only a Poison Fang, so we are going to no shield right Right here, build up to the crunch and hope for the defense drop. Needle Queen lets that go through. No defense drop, going to no shield once again. And Needle Queen again with the poison thing, going to get off another crunch as a result. And that is going to force the first shield from the opponent. They take us out with poison things, and we're going to come in with the Obstagoon. And we are going to no shield once again. Another poison thing, and they swap out into Deoxys. We are taking a lot of damage right here but I want to get off this night slash and now we are going to swap out into Dragalgy. Deoxys of course does have access to Psycho Boost so I am going to respect that and get baited. You hate to see it. This pretty much guarantees that they will force our final shield right here so we have no choice but to shield up the Psycho Boost, commit to the Dragon Tail down and see what they come in with. It is going to be Needle Queen so I'm just throwing the Aqua Tail in immediately that takes them out and it is a victory bell in the back and this is pretty much one of the hardest counters possible for a shadow victory bell this is the complete opposite of harry Maguire. we are actually playing some defense right here i do end up swapping out into obscoon which is probably the wrong play to be honest but i think even if the opponent didn't back out we would have been able to take this game so gg let's hop into the next one Obstagoon into Lickitung, this is a fantastic lead to see. The opponent swaps out into Swampert, which isn't the greatest safe switch to see, but we're going to throw a Night Slash right here and then swap out into the Dragalgy. I was hoping to catch a Hydro Cannon, but the opponent did hold off from throwing, so I am going to respect the potential Earthquake right here. We do end up getting baited. Shielding up this Aqua Tail was an interesting play from the opponent. Technically speaking, it would only make sense if they're able to reach an Earthquake, but I'm going to take the chance anyways, and it does happen to be only another Hydro Cannon. Against Lickitung, I'm just looking to do as much chip damage as we possibly can. We are going to allow Dragalgy to go down here at which point Obstagoon will come back in and this is likely to reveal what the opponent's final Pokemon is going to be and it's not exactly what we wanted to see. Metacham in the back this isn't too great for us going to throw a crunch hoping for the defense drop and we are fortunate enough to get it going to no shield this move from the Metacham hoping to get to another crunch and we are able to do that. This is likely to force the opponent's final shield. We'll come back in with the Obstagoon. Just need to get to this Night Slash as soon as possible. Hopefully this takes out the Metacham, and now we do have a lot of HP still left on the Obstagoon. Question is, can we take out this Lickitung before it reaches two body slams? And in the words of Brian Danielson, the answer appears to be yes. Night Slash comes through and Obstagoon is just able to counter down before the next body slam. Another win in the books, let's hop into the next battle.
So thus far, we haven't really run into too many core breakers for this team, but that's about to change. Toxicroak in the lead is one of the absolute worst things to see. We swap out into Dragalge, and the opponent actually comes in with Sableye, which is a matchup that Dragalge actually could win in some situations. The problem here is that even if we do win Switch, we do not have any answer left for the Toxicroak. So winning Switch here actually isn't important at all, what is more important would be getting a shield advantage. The unfortunate part is that even with a shield advantage, we have pretty much nothing to threaten this Toxicroak, so this matchup is looking pretty damn bad at this point. We are going to throw a Night Slash, swap out into the Drapion, and they bring in a Kanto Ninetales. We are going to throw a Crunch right here. In an ideal world, we will outpace to the next move, and believe it or not, that is what we do. So this is actually going to force the second and final shield from the opponent, and if we could somehow reach a hyper beam right here with the Obstagoon, there may be a win con still left in this matchup, but are we going to be able to do it? Look how much damage we're taking from those counters. Absolutely not. Maybe if we had Gunk Shot, we could have reached that. Even then, I don't think it would be possible. Toxicroak is a bit too strong of a core breaker for this team. And unfortunately, that is one of the drawbacks to running a team with an F rating on PV Poke. Obstagoon into Venusaur, we are going to swap out into Dragology, and the opponent is staying in for quite a bit before swapping out into Galarian Stunfisk. We now have a pretty big energy lead, so we are going to throw back to back Aqua Tails right here. If we correctly shield the Earthquake, I actually think we could flip this matchup because of the huge energy lead, but once the opponent decides to shield, I'm okay with letting the Dragology go down here, take the shield advantage, and just commit to a complete counter down with the Obstagoon, get that Hyper Beam ready to go on whatever comes in. Hopefully, it's gonna be the Venusaur. So going to no shield this move right here from the Stun Fisk, it is another Rock Slide. And of course, the one time they bring an Azumarill into a loaded Obstagoon, we are no longer running Gunk Shot. Hyper Beam coming through, bang, there it is. That's not a Gunk Shot type of bang on an Azu but Hyper Beam is still really nice to see. We swap out into Drapion, and neither Azumarill or Venusaur are going to want to see this in the back. The opponent doesn't want the smoke. And we are headed into the final battle of this set, looking for another 4-in-1 set here. Obstagoon into a Unova Stunfisk. Obviously, we can't really swap out into Drapion or Dragology because Stunfisk does have access to Mud Bomb, which is going to chunk away at both of these poison types in the back. As a result, we're just going to stay in here with the Obstagoon, look to build up to these Night Slashes, fish for the boost, but even without the boost, this is a matchup we should be able to win in all even shields. We are now at back to back night slashes and we should be able to get both of these off before the stun fist reaches a move. I would imagine at this point the opponent is going to no shield this and they come in with an Alolan Marowak. We are able to hang on and reach this night slash that is going to force the first shield from the opponent and we now come in with Dragology. Going to no shield this move and it happens to be a Shadow Ball. Opponent swaps out to Pelipper and we come in with Shadow Drapion. This is not a great answer to Pelipper by any means, but at this point I figured if we just save the shields for Dragology, we should be in a pretty safe spot. I decide to no shield this and just commit to the Poison Sting farm. It gets to a point where they actually throw the Weather Ball here, and I do believe if we shield this up that Poison Sting will take out the Pelipper, at which point we have a Crunch ready to go on the Alolan Marowak, and the opponent decides to just give up, like the Toronto Maple Leafs do every season in Game 7 of the playoffs. Main takeaway from this video, Cross Chop plus Night Slash, probably the best move set for Obstagoon. If you enjoyed this video, please consider leaving a like and a comment down below. And if you'd like to see more content like this, consider subscribing. Thanks for watching.